extensively on irrigation when the dispute over Alamati or Krishna River and uh, Babali Barrage on Godavari figured in this house, sir. So the issue of raising of height of Alamati Dam and River Krishna by Karnatak figured in this house on many occasions, sir. Sir, but I would like to say this without any hesitation. Let it be the Telugu Desham government or the Congress government or after the formation of Telangana, the BRS government. Sir, all of them have somewhere been responsible. Because we have been seeing this, sir, from quite a long time, sir. Sir, when I talk about Alamati, sir, on uh, River Krishna by Karnataka, sir, without any hesitation, I would say that it was due to the failure of the then Chief Minister, Mr. Chandrababu Naidu Saab, that the Karnataka succeeded in raising the height of Alamati Dam, thereby causing harm to the riparian interest of AP and now the Telangana, sir. So the height of Alamati Dam controversy, Naidu Saab got the then Karna Karnataka Chief Minister Saab, H.D. Devagoda, elevated as the Prime Minister of India. Then Prime Minister of India, the then A.P. Devagoda Saab, he had constituted a committee of four Chief Ministers, sir. Then uh, it was chaired by the West Bengal Chief Minister, Mr. Jyoti, Jyoti Basu Saab, to resolve the interstate dispute among Maharashtra, Karnataka, and AP or Alamati Dam, sir. Even as the Jyoti Basu Committee and four member expert committee were looking into the issue, the Karnataka government, <coughs> under the then Chief Minister J.H. Patel, illegally continued the construction of the Alamati Dam on a war footing for raising the height of the dam from 519.6 meters to 524.25 meters for impounding higher quantum of water, sir. So during the earlier Congress regime in United AP 2004 and 14, Maharashtra government began work on Babali barrage for impounding more water for upstream of Sri, Sri Ram Sagar before River Godavari water flows into Telangana. Sir, it was in 2004 that the Maharashtra expedited the construction of Babali and 10 other barrages on the Godavari, raising the alarm in Andhra Pradesh. So the Babali issue also snowballed into a big political issue, sir, in AP, with the main opposition, TDP and other parties, including, I was also there, sir, then, the AIMIM mounting pressure on the then YSR regime to get the work of Babali and other barrages stopped by the Congress government in Maharashtra. Sir, incidentally, United AP government took the dispute over Alamati Dam and Babali, Barra Supreme Court, but could not get any relief. Sir, I'm just going into the history briefly, sir. So, pronouncing the judgment in the original suit, 2 of 1997, other writ petitions between the state of AP versus state of Karnataka and others on 25th April 2000, the five-member bench of Supreme Court headed by Justice S.B. Mojamdar dismiss and dispose the original suit and other petitions without giving any relief to Andhra Pradesh. This is the history, sir. Subsequently, sir, the Krishna Water Dispute Tribunal 2, headed by Brijesh Kumar, upheld its award of 2010 for raising the height of Alamati Dam from 519.60 meters to 524.26 meters. So the KWDT 2, Asked the government of India to appoint Krishna Water Decision Implementing uh, Implementation Board, giving representation to Karnataka, Maharashtra, and AP as well as the government of India. Pronouncing the judgment in the original suit number one of 2006, other writ petitions and the content petitions between the state of AP versus state of Maharashtra and others on 20th February 2013, a three-judge bench on Supreme Court headed by Justice R. M. Lodha dismissed and disposed the original suit and other petition without giving any relief to Andhra Pradesh. Sir. sir, when I was going to the CAG reports on performance, audit on Kaleshwaram, in the note 
of the background of the KLIS, the CAG pointed out that the earlier the audit had reviewed the Pranahita, Chavala, Sujala, Saravanti as part of performance audit of Jalayagnam CAG report number 2 of 2012, Andhra Pradesh government, sir. Sir, I may recall that 2012, Andhra Pradesh government, sir. Sir, I may recall that irrigation projects always quoted controversies in the state because of several reasons, sir. Some of the projects were taken up on the assured water, that is the quantum of water for river allocation of the states, and some others were taken up on so-called surplus water, that is the quantum of water not allocated to the state but available for use when the monsoons are normal or there are floods into the rivers. So some of the projects were completed within the stipulated time frame, some other projects were delayed for years and decades despite the best efforts of the successive governments to complete them. Some projects were taken up without the mandatory clearance from the Central Water Commission, Ministry of Water Resources, Jal Shakti, Ministry of Environment and Forest and other authorities, sir. For some other projects, the clearance were obtained while they were being constructed. Time and cost overrun have been the common feature of the most of the irrigation projects taken up in United Andhra Pradesh and thereafter in Telangana state also, sir. Sir, when the Jalayaganam program was launched in 2004 by the Congress government headed by Dr. Vyas Rashekar Reddy, the main opposition TDP, mounted a barrage of criticism, sir, and even termed it as the Dhanayagnam scheme for milking the contracts and the contractors. This was said, sir, then. Sir, after the formation of Telangana state, the TRS government redesigned the Paranahita Chevala project as Kaleshwaram lift irrigation scheme, launched several new projects, projects and also expedited the work for the completion of some ongoing projects which they delayed for many years. Sir. And this is also a fact, none can deny this. So the Jalayagnam program was taken up in 2004 for construction of reservoirs and lift irrigation schemes on Godavari and Krishna River so as to create 97.46 lakh acres of new Ayakat and stabilize the existing Ayakat to 22.53 lakhs acres. Jalayagnam Jala program was proposed to provide drinking water to 2.22 crore people in 6,310 villages utilized in 64.14 lakh TMC to generate 2,700 megawatt of hydel power also, sir. The program comprised 86 projects with a cost of 1.86 lakhs crores. A dozen of these projects taken a period of 2004 and 5 with approval cost of 2,139 crores were brought under Jalayagam to expedite their completion, sir. Also 74 new projects were sanctioned between 2004 and 5 and 2008 and 9 with approved cost of, with an approved cost of 1,83,470 crores. Sir, I repeat, sir. Sir, new projects were sanctioned between 2004 and 5 and 2008 and 9 with approved cost of 1,83,470, sir. Sir, I may also recall some observation of the CAG report on Jalayagnam with regard to B.R. Ambedkar, Pranahita, Chevella, Sujala, Saravanti, sir. The Pranahita, Chevella projects was Emphasized to create irrigation potential of 16.4 lakh acres in seven districts of Telangana by utilizing 160 TMC from Pranahita and 20 TMC from Godavari. Sir. The project cost was fixed for rupees 17,875 crores in May 2007, but it further enhanced to more than 115% to rupees 38,500. 500 crores within a year and a half, that is December 2008, sir. 2008, sir. Sir, it is the same Pranayita Chivalla project that was designed and remained as Kaleshwaram lift irrigation scheme by the previous BRS regime, sir. And once again, the CAG has exposed the irregularity and lapses in the execution of Kaleshwaram project, sir. Now coming to the issue highlighting, highlighted in the white paper, sir, I would like to speak on few of them, honorable speaker, sir. 
Sir, I, I may point out that Honorable Irrigation Minister Janab Uttam Kumar Reddy Saab has presented in this house on the projects and issue, issues of Krishna River on, 10th, on, on, sorry, on 12th of February 2024. He also made a presentation on report on Medigadda Barrage and the Kalesharam project on the Barrage side on 13th February when the legislatures were taken there on field visit. Most of the issues relating to the projects on Godavari and Krishna River has been discussed at length in these two presentations. According to the presentation on project and issues of Krishna River, there are 17 existing projects in Telangana and marked by erstwhile AP with water requirement of 298.96 TMC and average utilization from 2014 to 15 to 2022-23 of 197.83 MC, uh, TMC for an ayakat of 15,68,104 crore, sir. The five ongoing projects of Telangana state with water utilization of 225.4 TMC and contemplated ayakut of 25,64,500 uh, 25, acres. In addition, there are seven Contemplated projects with planned utilization of 206.5 TMC and planned ayakot of 23,7983 acres. So there are total 29 irrigation projects completed, ongoing and proposed on Krishna River in Telangana state with water, water requirement of 731 TMC of ayakot for 64,40,587 acres. The total allocation for United AP is, now it is very important sir, sir the total allocation for United AP is 811 TMC as per KWDT award and the requirement for Telangana for existing ongoing and contemplated project is 731 TMC, right. I don't know how and from where we will get the required quantum of 731 TMC for all the 29 projects on River Krishna in Telangana sir. Sir, you have only honorable irrigation minister sir, only in his presentation he has said that that pure Telangana ke liye jo allocation hai, 800 change bole aap. Aur Telangana ke ye projects ke liye itna paani 731 hona hai. To ye kaan se aayega? This needs to be replied sir. Sir, Telangana state is not able to get its due share of Krishna waters ever since formation from, from the year 2014 sir. In fact, in construction of Alamati and Upper Krishna project in Karnataka in mid-90s, the inflows into United AP were considerably reduced year after year. So who is responsible for this, sir? So I would say that the people who failed to protect the interest of the then AP are the ones who are responsible, sir. That our water is not getting us. Whether it's the time of Andhra Pradesh or Congress, या उस वक्त आंध्र प्रदेश की तेलुगु देशम की हुकूमत हो ये लोग उस वक्त नाकाम होने की वजह से आज तेलंगाना को पानी के लिए तरसना पड़ रहा है पानी नहीं मिल रहा है और यही एक वजह थी जिसके लिए कि तेलंगाना की आवाम ने अलाहिदा रियासत का मुतालबा किया और तेलंगाना की जिद्दोजहद की और हासिल किया सर इन फैक्ट सिंस द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ अलमट्टी एंड अपर कृष्णा प्रोजेक्ट्स इन कर्नाटका इन मिड 90s, the inflows into United AP were considerably reduced year after year, sir. Now the two riparian states, AP and Telangana, have to share the reduced inflow in Krishna from Karnataka state. I would like the irrigation minister, sir, Mr. Uttam Kumar Reddy, sir, to clarify on this crucial issue, sir, when he replies. So the irrigation minister, sir, has referred to the irrigation potential created and expenditure incurred on irrigation in Telangana since 1951 till now, sir. 1951, I was seeing, sir. As per a statement, the total expenditure incurred on irrigation before formation of Terengana in 2004 was 54,234 crores. Sir, I have my own doubts. Honorable Speaker, sir, I have my own doubts about the authenticity of these figures, and I think it was arrived at nationally on the basis of the same formula that was adopted for calculating the shares of Telangana in the budgetary expenditure of United Andhra Pradesh. 
फ्रॉम 1956-57 टू 2013 एंड 14 इन व्हाइट पेपर ऑन स्टेट फाइनेंसेस रिलीज बाय डिप्टी सीएम साहब इन डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी सर ऑनरेबल स्पीकर सर द बजट एक्सपेंडिचर ऑफ तेलंगाना इन कंबाइंड एपी वाज एसेस्ड एट रुपीज फोर लैख नाइंटी एट थाउजेंड जीरो फोर थ्री करोड दैट इज फोर्टी वन पॉइंट सिक्स एट परसेंट आउट ऑफ इलेवन लैक्स नाइंटी फोर थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी फाइव करोड दिस फिगर वॉज कैलकुलेटेड ऑनरेबल स्पीकर सर दिस फिगर वॉज कैलकुलेटेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ पॉपुलेशन रेशियो ऑफ फोर्टी वन पॉइंट सिक्स एट एंड फिफ्टी एट पॉइंट थ्री टू बिटवीन तेलंगाना एंड सीमा आंध्रा इंक्लूडिंग इन द एपी रिओर्गेनाइजेशन एक्ट सर द एस्टिमेट ऑफ एक्सपेंडिचर शोन फॉर तेलंगाना डू नॉट करस्पॉन्ड टू द एक्चुअल बजटरी एक्सपेंडिचर ऑन द रीजन इन अनडिवाइडेड एपी एंड कैन नॉट बी रिकन एज फैक्चुअल सर इट कैनॉट बी सर इट कैनॉट बी सर सिर्फ आप एक रेशियो ले लिए उस हिसाब से बोल दिए इतना हो गया इतना हो गया नो दिस इज clearly and unseriousness sir sir the officials and the people responsible should have been uh, should have been given the responsibility of taking out the actual sir actuals where they have failed sir so moreover the irrigation ministers have had cited the data on budget allocation expenditure irrigation details economic analysis details of major projects undertaken with corporation loans and irrigation sector a comprehensive analysis sir i am sorry to point out that the budget estimate and expenditure figures cited by the white paper on irrigation do not reflect the budget estimates and account of expenditure in the budget book of telangana government from 2024 and 15 onwards sir and the government of undivided ap this is 1956 57 to 2013 and 14 sir so leaving aside what was the budgeted and spent on irrigation in united andhra pradesh sir including telangana region up to 2014 the budget estimates for irrigation in telangana states for 2015 and 2015 to 2023 24 as per white paper is rupees One lakh thirty-three thousand seven hundred and ninety-one point five two crores, and the expenditure is rupees one lakh twenty-six thousand eight thirty-three point one three crore. That is ninety-four point eight zero percent, sir. This is ninety-four point eight zero percent, sir. Sir, most surprisingly, surprisingly, sir, the white paper says that for the irrigation sector, no loan were taken by AP from nineteen fifty-six fifty-seven to. 2013 and 14 and this exposes the sh shoddy figure cited in the white paper sir how can they say that ke no no loan were taken by ap from 1956 and 57 and uh, to 2013 and 14 and this exposes the real shoddy figure sir and i think this needs to be corrected but they have they haven't mentioned here they are, they are supposed to mention it i am coming to that point sir what you are saying i am coming to that also sir as as the white paper the expenditure on irrigation in telangana is rupees 54234 crores out of the total budgetary expenditure of 4 lakhs 98053 crores in the region that is only 11 11% which also appears unrealistic this also needs to be corrected sir how can it be sir i repeat once again as the white paper figures the expenditure on irrigation in telangana is rupees 54234 crores out of the total budgetary expenditure of 4 lakhs 98053 crores in the region that is only 11% which also appears unrealistic so going further ahead sir similarly the loan figures for irrigation in telangana state at rupees 84090 crores do not match the actual loan amounts provided in the state budget account and more so when the state is said to have taken zero loans in the three financial year that is 2014 and 15 15 and 16 and 23 and 24 sir aapka dekh lijiye sir usme hai aapke usme 3 years sir uh, speaker sir <coughs> about this borrowings i want to clarify one thing this issue of 
of budget borrowings did not exist earlier prior to 2014 and also probably not in the first two three years of the new government coming in the new state it's only after that under the name of Kaleshwaram Corporation under the name of Telangana Water Resources Development Corporation two new corporations were formed exclusively for irrigation and they were uh, borrowings against both these corporations, which if I remember right, the total figure of both the corporations comes to 84,000 crores. That is the, how this reflection is there. In the combined state, there was no such uh, procedure. There was no procedure of a separate corporation to borrow for irrigation only. So this is the uh, difference about borrowing for uh, uh, irrigation. And uh, the central government is not, you know, earlier, uh, earlier central government was not taking this under the FRBM limit. Somewhere after 2014, after a few years, when they found that many states in India, like Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, were forming SPVs for corporations for irrigation, and borrowing indiscriminately, then they brought this also under FRBM. That is the background of it, and after you finish, I'll give you a detailed reply. Uh, yes. Irrigation bond key, special corporate setup key, there's a difference. No, 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 are raised by the government. No, 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 one minute. See, irrigation bonds may have been floated by the then government for the purpose of irrigation. But I'm telling you, after TRS government came in Telangana, they set up special corporations to borrow for irrigation, that is a fact. I mean, I'm not stating something opinion. Akbar sir, Akbar sir, Akbar sir, sir. Then me kunna di, me kau kaise kunna di? Sir, Akbar sir. Honorable Speaker, sir, I thank uh, the irrigation minister. Adhiksha, Gauravan eat paradala shaka matilu. Rinduela Padnal Kumundu, Neat Pardala Project Lapena, Erekamena, Runamu, Apul Discola, the no matter matter. Adeksha Nak Bagutundi, Rinduela Padnal Kumundu Guda, Mana World Bank in Chapuzetskunam, Manam Irrigation Bonds and Floor Jesnam, Irrigation Bonds Dora Uchan and Nidrano, World Bank in Chusna, Apul and Udamanamo, Irrigation Projects Lavarkunam. Irrigation bonds are not available. World Bank is not available. If you have a school, you can't get a school. You can't get a school. Akbar, sir. I'm sorry. It's a senior member, Miru. You're making basic mistakes. Irrigation bonds or World Bank is borrowed by the government of Andhra Pradesh or state government. This is a separate corporation. The corporation borrows and the government gives a guarantee. The, the structure is different in both. And also... Honorable uh, Speaker, sir. Sir, I, uh, I thank... Sir, I thank uh, Uttam Kumar Reddy sir, for giving a reply, sir. And I also thank Kadiyam Srihari sir, for once again replying so i don't want to go into the detail the only thing i would say that sir he is right in his place he is also right sir but at the same time bonds existed then world bank loan also existed then now after the formation of telangana what irrigation minister saab says that corporations were formed and corporation took the loan took the loan that is also right this also cannot be denied that also cannot be denied sir going further ahead sir yeah, yeah, it is. No doubt, sir. 
so the white paper page number 27 to 29 sir the list out the 24 ongoing loan based project for which the administrative sanction cost of rupees 2 lakh 93,440.48 crore the loan raised so far amount of rupees 1 lakh 95,666.58 crore that is 68 points sorry 66.68 percent and the balance the loan to be raised are rupees 97,773.90 crores. Sir. So these project envisage creation of irrigation potential of 73.58 lakh acres and out of this the IP created till now is only 20 lakhs 51,000 acres that is 27.87 percent and the balance IP to be created is 53.09 like, lakh acres sir. and this is as per the white paper sir so the, the what I am trying to explain is that sir ke hum itna paisa kharach kare sir ke the, the amount that has been spent is almost 67 percent but hum jo create kare hai sir jo land ko hum ayakut mein lae hai it is only 27 percent sir so this is what I, I need a clarification from Honorable Minister Saab sir. On page 9 of the white paper, 22 ongoing projects are listed and the IP contemplated under these project is 48.616 lakh acres sir. The, uh, the IP created so far is 15.81 lakhs and the balance IP to be created is 30, 32.35 uh, lakh acres sir. I don't know which figure to believe sir. There are two figures. Sir, this is on page number 9, sir, of the white paper, sir. Sir, however, the government has to raise the funds to, for completion of all the ongoing projects so that the balance IP is created in the state to benefit the farmers. The state budget and the budgetary allocation includes three components, revenue account, capital account, and loans. The loans taken and serviced by the government are shown in the state budget. And these are different from the loans taken as extra budgetary resources for the corporation for which the state government stands a guarantee. As to what Honorable Minister Saab had said, sir. Sir, table number 7 on major irrigation projects funding details show the budgetary allocation and loan share which also do not match with the actual figures, sir. It's, it doesn't match, sir. No figure is matching, sir. Table 8, sir, on share of irrigation budget versus GSDP also do not give the accurate figures on irrigation allocation and share in GSDP, sir. So also the details of major projects undertaken with the co corporation loan cited in the white paper on irrigation do not match with the figures cited elsewhere in the same papers and also in the white paper on the state finances, sir. So the irrigation white paper says loans taken for, Kal for Kaleshwaram and PRLS through KIPCL amount to rupees 68,806 crores and the loans taken by TSWRIDCL for various other projects amount to rupees 15,284 crores and the total loan amount of two corporations comes to 84,090 84, crores. The white paper on st state finances, the white paper on state finances in table 10 shows that the loan avail, availed by KIPCL amount to rupees 79,287 crores and loan borrowed by TRSWRIDCL amount to 15,284 crores and total comes to 94,575 crores. So how can it be sir? Ke aap ek paper is house mein de rahe hai, usme ek amount hai, White paper may ek amount hai. Ye paper bhi aapne diya, wo paper bhi aapne diya. But how can this be? One paper was presented by the finance minister. One paper has now been presented by the irrigation minister. So which paper is right, sir? Which paper is right? Who is right, sir? I would like the ministers up to clarify on the variation in all the figures cited in the irrigation white paper, sir. Sir, how can we have a healthy debate and a discussion when the figures itself are wrong? So we, do, we don't know how much of wrong information has also been given and shown. I have gone through a lot of documents including budget books, 
CAG reports and account on my findings are follow, sir. Sir, as per the budgetary data, sir. Sir, if I am wrong, sir, I have this paper, sir. Through you, I can send this to Honorable Minister Saab also, if he wants, sir, when I complete. Or if he wants, he can see it, sir. Sir, I have gone through a lot of documents, including budget books, CAG reports and accounts, and my findings are as follows, sir. Sir, as per budgetary data since the formation of Andhra Pradesh state in 1953 and Andhra Pradesh in 1956, the total expenditure on irrigation and command area development sector between 1951 and 52 to 1998 and 99 aggregated to rupees. Rupees 8,773.78 crores. However, they, there is a big jump on budgetary expenditure on irrigation and the CAD from the year 99-2000 onwards. The TDP government spent 13,079.51 crores during five-year periods, that is from 99-2000 to 2003 and 4. They had spent 13,079.51. The successor Congress government, Congress government spent 1,41,882.35 crores in 10 years period, that is 2004 and 5 to 2013 and 14 in United Andhra Pradesh. The total expenditure on irrigation in United AP from 1951-52 to 2013 and 14 comes to 1,63,735.64 crore and this includes the expenditure on revenue, capital and loan accounts also. Subsequently, sir, after the formation of Telangana state, the BRS government spent 1,41,041.32 crores in 10 years period, that is from 2014 and 15 to 2023 24, including budget estimate of rupees 26,868.91 crores in the year 2023 and 2024, the current financial year, I mean. As per the details cited by White Paper on irrigation and state finances, the loan amount of rupees 94,572 crores raised by two SPVs and and uh, KPICL and TSWRI DCL are actually government guarantee loans serviced by the government. Right. This means that these loans do not form a part of state budget allocation for irrigation department and are actually extra budgetary resources raised by the concerned corporations. If we, now, it is very important, sir. If we add these loans raised by the two, two corporations to the budgetary expenditure of irrigation by Telangana government in the last 10 years, the total figure comes to 2,35,613.32 crore. This is budgetary expenditure of rupees 1,41,041.32 crores and loan amount of 94,572. Sir, so I would request the Irrigation Minister Saab, Mr. Uttam Kumar Reddy Sahab, and Deputy CM Sahab, Bhatti Vikrama Sahab, to clarify on all issues regarding the allocations and loans for the state irrigation sector. This is very important, sir. It has not been shown properly and corrected. Sir, the irrigation projects include the project that we completed ongoing projects and proposed projects, most of the ongoing are the ones which were sanctioned in United AP and some of these remain ongoing for four decades or even more SLBCs in case in point as the work is going on since 1980s, sir. So talking about Krishna Basin projects, the white paper points out that the paper says that the previous Telangana government agreed for allocation of 299 TMC of water and 512 TMC to AP from Krishna without consider considering the state needs. The white paper, page number 5, says that based on Krishna Basin catchment area in Telangana, the state is entitled to get 68.5% of water. That is 555 TMC out of total allocation of 811 TMC for the two states. 
here i may once again recall that in the representation on krishna waters in the house earlier sir in the sorry in the, in the presentation which was made in this house sir earlier the irrigation minister saab had stated for the 29 completed ongoing contemplated projects on krishna in the state of telangana need 731 tmc 731 tmc i would request the irrigation minister saab to enlighten on this as the 555 tmc being sought by the congress government will not be sufficient for all these 29 projects in telangana am i right or wrong sir i am thankful that the irrigation minister saab had recall the contribution of nizam in the overall development of the erstwhile hyderabad state especially in implementing several important irrigation projects across telangana including nizam sagar upper manair usman sagar himayat sagar pocharam sadarmat sarvana kadam sarala sagar fatehnagar vaira extra crossal i may say that ali sagar was also built in nizamabad district and it is incidentally the name of the noted engineer nawab ali nawaz jung in the nizam era sir so the sadarmat and ghanpur project constructed in nizam era were strong enough for the 100 years and provided water to the ayakat there are many issues which have been highlighted by the white paper and i was listening to the elaborate presentation of the irrigation minister saab motram uttam kumar reddy saab and the debate that followed in which former irrigation minister harish rao saab also spoke sir before i conclude i would like to raise a few issues and seek answers from the government sir so the first what is the intent of new government with regard to the issue of completion of all ongoing irrigation projects and execution of the contemplated projects in the state sir do we have water availability in godavari and krishna and their tributaries for existing ongoing contemplated projects and what the total quantum of water required for these projects in the state in terms of T tmc for godavari and krishna sir this is very important sir sir the reason why i am asking asking this is is sir hum dekhe hain andhra pradesh assembly mein rail seema mein bhi kai aise projects banaye hue hain sir projects ban ke hain lekin sooke pade hain pani aata nahi waisi pade hue hain तो सर वी नीड टू री लुक इन टू अवर प्रोजेक्ट ऑल्सो रायल सीमा के वैसा नहीं होना है कि प्रोजेक्ट बन गए खड़े हुए हैं पानी तो रहता ही नहीं तो यहां पर भी होना चाहिए सर दिस इज वाई आई एम रिक्वेस्टिंग दिस सर सर ऑल दीज ऑन गोइंग एंड कंटेम्बलेटेड प्रोजेक्ट वायबल इन टर्म्स ऑफ वॉटर अवेलेबिलिटी फीजेबिलिटी एंड यूटिलिटी सर सर दीज water availability feasibility and utility is very important sir i am sorry to uh, sorry to say that sir do not do not think that i am criticizing the previous governments the congress tdp or brs no sir but this is very important sir sir never there has been a discussion on the availability of the water never there has been a discussion on the feasibility of the project and never there has been a discussion on the utility sir पानी कहां से आएगा पानी उठाने के लिए पावर कहां से आएगा और वो पावर पे कितना खर्च होगा पावर होने के बाद में फ्री पंप सेट पर कितना पावर होगा और उसके बाद कितने कितनी जमीन सैराब होगी इस पर किसी ने गौर नहीं किया एंड देन द वायबिलिटी ऑफ अ प्रोजेक्ट शुड आल्सो बी डिस्कस्ड अनफॉर्चुनेटली सर नेवर देर हैज बीन एनी डिस्कशन ऑन द वायबिलिटी ऑफ अ प्रोजेक्ट सर i am sorry to say sir and please excuse me i am not using this term for anyone but i feel ke ye irrigation projects have become an atm have become an atm pehle ke liye aur aane walon ke liye ya phir iske liye 20 baras se sir i am discussing on this atm projects sir irrigation atm projects awam ko kitna fayda hota hai nahi malum sir sir it is estimated sir most of the irrigation projects are lift irrigation project which needs power for the lifting of the water for supply the cag report on kaleshwaram and white paper points out that if all pumps in the project are used more electricity will be required than the requirement of the entire state for the day sir 
सर मैं सर वेन आई से सर फ्यू मेंबर्स माइट से दैट कि अकबर साहब आप 20 साल से हैं आप क्या करें सर आई हैव दीज प्रोसीडिंग सर आई हैव दीज प्रोसीडिंग ऑफ द हाउस सर सर आई हैव बीन सेइंग दिस राइट फ्रॉम द टाइम यस फ्रॉम द ईयर 2000 सर आई हैव सर 2016 में भी लास्ट आई टोल्ड द सेम थिंग सर कि पावर कहां से आएगा कितना आएगा कैसा आएगा सर इफ आई एम रॉन्ग आई मे बी करेक्टेड सर सर दिस इट इज एस्टिमेटेड द पावर बिल फॉर लिफ्टिंग वाटर अंडर कालेश्वरम प्रोजेक्ट विल बी टेन थाउजेंड करोर पर ईयर सर आई एम आई राइट और रॉन्ग यू हैव टू रिप्लाई टू मी सर सर इट इज एस्टिमेटेड द पावर बिल फॉर लिफ्टिंग वाटर अंडर कालेश्वरम प्रोजेक्ट वुड बी टेन थाउजेंड एंड वॉट विल बी द क्वांटम ऑफ पावर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर ऑल लिफ्ट इरीगेशन प्रोजेक्ट इन द स्टेट सर honorable minister saab should reply sir on this sir also do we have the required install capacity in the power sector for lifting the water from all the lift irrigation projects simultaneously this also needs to be replied sir what will be the cost of power for lifting the water from these projects every year apart from meeting the demands of all other consumers when i say all other con consumers sir honorable speaker sir free power cost every year estimated that i might be wrong but again this was this was there in the white paper which was presented by the power minister sir sir 24 hours to agricultural sector 12000 crores 200 years free to consumers 4800 crores for kaleshwaram pa project pumps 10374 crores remaining lift irrigation 5000 crores the total comes to 32174 crores sir ye kaisa hai sir this is why i am requesting and demanding that a viability study needs to be conducted sir on each and every project sir sir we need power to supply free power to farmers for their pump sets also 200 unit for free power to eligible households and power for the lift irrigation scheme in addition to all existing power consumers what is the viability and feasibility of of supply of power for these lift irrigation schemes and what is the annual cost that has to be incurred by the government through budgetary allocation this also needs to be replied sir all the existing ongoing and contemplated projects include the loan component and the government needs to and uh, earmark huge amounts of funds running into thousands of crores of rupees for repayment of interest and principal amount also it is not just this amount sir so the white paper points out that the state would have to pay the debt amounting to rupees 1.35 lakh crore in the next 10 years sir the total repayment of loan with interest in the next 5 years will require 77369 crores the total requirement of funds now sir the total requirements of funds to complete the ongoing and contemplated project is rupees 1 lakh 75143 crores sir i i don't know where, whether we have the water availability and required power for all these irrigation projects more importantly do we have the financial resources available to the government to for completion of the ongoing contemplated projects sir sir through you sir through you sir without blaming any one i would like to make one suggestion to the government please prepare a draft action plan on irrigation sector and convey an all party meeting to elicit views and suggestions for the pol from the political parties there has to be consensus on what the state is doing in the ski infrastructure sector as the agriculture sector is the main source of livelihood for the farming sector community it is very important sir viability feasibility has to be studied hum hum paise pe paisa kharchte ja rahe hain pani kahan se aayega pehla sawal agar pani aa gaya to wo pani ko lift karne ke liye power kahan se aayega agar power bhi aa gaya to free pump pe fir kya फिर उसके बाद क्या इज इट इज इट आई मीन एज इन एनी बिजनेस एन इन्वेस्टर लुक्स इन टू द इन्वेस्टमेंट एंड ऑल्सो द रिटर्न आफ्टर द इन्वेस्टमेंट 
वॉट आर द रिटर्न सर वॉट आर द रिटर्न इट इज वेरी अनफॉर्चुनेट सर सर मैं कह रहा हूं कि विद विद अ वेरी हैवी हार्ट आई एम टॉकिंग टूडे सर वेरी हैवी हार्ट के पैसा किस तरीके से जा रहा है चाहे वो हो या कोई और हो बस खाली खरचते हैं प्रोजेक्ट्स पे अरे फायदा कितना हो रहा है किसान को कितनी मदद हो रही है स्टेट कितना प्रॉस्पर हो रहा है स्टेट की प्रॉस्पेरिटी को किसी को फिक्र नहीं है अपनी अपनी प्रॉस्पेरिटी के ऊपर तवज्जो दी जा रही है एटीएम मशीन की तरह पैसा निकल रहा है और लोग खुशहाल हो रहे हैं रियासत में हमारी खुशहाली नहीं दिखाई देती है सर आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट द गवर्नमेंट टू टेक ऑल स्टेप्स टू इंश्योर दैट कालेश्वरन प्रोजेक्ट इज रिस्टोर टू सेफ्टी बिफोर द मानसून सर सर रिगार्डिंग द फाइनेंशियल इरेगुलरिटीज एंड टेक्निकल फ्लॉस एंड लैपसेज इन द कालेश्वरन प्रोजेक्ट I would say the government is free to order, free to order whatever type of inquiry and invest investigation it wants. Harish Rao Saab also has said they are free, sir. But sir, honourable speaker, sir, I would like to remind that the irrigation department, engineers, officials are the not one, are not the ones responsible for whatever has happened, and they should not be made. They should not be made, sir, scapegoats. for the financial irregularities and technical technical flaws in the kaleshwaram project sir aisa hi hota hai ke bade bade logon ke jhagde mein ek gareeb peese mein aa jata hai ye badon ke jhagdon mein gareeb ko na peese gareeb ko na saza de aur aapne jo mujhe mauka diya hai iske liye main aapka shukriya ada karta hu speaker sahab aur ummeed karta hu ke hukumat ki janib se jo sawalat maine uthaye hain uska mujhe mausar jawab milega i thank you very much for giving me this opportunity sir sri rajgopal yes uh, the government is will organize an all party meeting to discuss irrigation projects uh, we have no issues on that i'll i'll by self call for it very soon second uh, you know the about the water allocation what i'd like to submit is existing projects uh oh sir sir existing projects the already existing hai unka bhi allocation i mean this is what uh, the earlier government also had asked was for the existing projects is 299 tmc ongoing projects means which are in the construction and uh, which are uh, under construction for that the water required is 225 tmc this is krishna waters what i was mentioning krishna waters contemplated projects there no work on the ground and no money expended so far this is like a proposal in one's mind there is no such uh, thing on the ground as yet now about water allocation bachavat award was 811 tmc n block n block to combined andhra pradesh okay so as i was mentioning in my presentation earlier it is my opinion that the earlier government was mistaken in asking for only 299 that's my you know that's what i submitted in the presentation no no other is my opinion uh, uh. so if we had gone for catchment area, percentage of catchment area is of so approximately 68% then we could have claimed closer to 550 tmc which would have covered existing and ongoing projects but will not still cover contemplated projects this is the actual situation but i must tell you that this bachavat award was based on 75% dependability now the it is very likely if all the states agree they may allocate additional water based on 65% dependability in that case our state could also get another 194 tmc that was a rough calculation of the water availability now about your uh, i mean i really appreciate your concern about the viability and feasibility of the projects you know you are probably aware that i was an mla and mp from nagarjun sagar project ayakat seven times consecutive about the same year as you were so 
in those years i'm just speaking broadly and not politically now irrigation projects were always viable because most of them were gravity flow most of the irrigation projects all over the country or all over the world or they were small lift irrigation schemes which still had certain viability now what you are saying is of a serious concern because it is now that we are lifting water by 500 meters and transporting it by 250 kilometers to do flood flow paddy cultivation now is this viable yes so this is something that requires serious deliberation i can't off the cuff make this figures but i will tell you some interesting figures kaleshwaram project it you know should concern any citizen of the state that when all pumps in kaleshwaram project work the cost is at today's power cost at today's power cost is 10600 crores a year okay now the uh, you are quoting either the power minister or finance minister's uh, white paper only kaleshwaram is 10000 crores 10600 when all the lift work is 15000 crores so now how much does it work out to and like you rightly said it is more than the rest of the power consumption in the state it is a matter of serious concern why is it coming now like this because there never was there never was even when long innings in assembly and in parliament this kind of a huge lift so governments may have the justification and it can be another day of detailed discussion on the finances the viability the feasibility which you said in my opinion water is available but at a cost when you when you lift now when you lift water from kaleshwaram energy cost alone energy cost alone per acre is 43000 this cag report and uh, cost of finance is another 50000 more actually i'm quoting the lower end so about a lack of rupees per acre so now no annual cost per acre now whether it is uh, a viable feasible that judgment i leave it to you because it's a you know government of the day it's a policy decision Yes. I agree with you, and uh, all the queries you had about the finances and the differences in the white papers, I will give you a detailed reply about it. And our uh, government policy about completion of ongoing projects is: we realize that we don't, you know, have the resources to take up all projects simultaneously and complete them. So, as per directions. and the consultative meetings we had uh, chaired by the honorable chief minister we said we will take up those projects where at a minimum or optimal cost we could generate more aya cut if something is going to take a lot of money and lot of time that will take second priority lesser money and shorter time we are going to take up we have prioritized projects and we are going to take it up and our target for this financial year is 7 lakh acres new aya cut thank you rajgopal dhanyavaadal adhyaksha adhyaksha nenu maatladu